Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We're tracking a busy morning on our roadways here in the Alamo City with a major crash happening now and a deadly hit and run. I'm Stephen Cavazos. What you need to know before getting behind the wheel. And new details on that Russian cyber attack on the world's largest meat supplier, plus a look at the growing threat to U.S. businesses. And outside with Light Cam, waiting on that next round of showers and storms. We'll check in with Mike Osterhage coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, June 3rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoyed your break yesterday from the rain. But for now, let's go ahead and check the roads. I had some trouble coming into work today. You were delayed, yes. and this is one of the reasons why. Stephen yep. has more. Yeah, there's a few people on our team actually that were delayed. We know we had a few producers, Steph, you as well. This crash is actually happening now at I-10 at Wurzbach. Take a look over here at the wall. I mean, this is going to be impacted impacting anybody's commute if you're coming down I-10 in those eastbound lanes so right at worst spot. Just take a look. This is a blurry image that we have from Transguide right now, but we do see that we have emergency crews that are out there, even some on the overpass right there. Now, what we know so far is that this was a rollover that occurred overnight and one person was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Now, crews are going to be out there for some time investigating this scene. So, we'll, of course, we will continue to follow this uh, throughout the morning. Now, let's go ahead and see where exactly where that that is on the map. We know that three lanes are going to be blocked here in those eastbound lanes right at Wurzbach, and that includes between Hebner and Medical Drive. So that is going to be the big issue if you're heading out the door this morning. Another thing that we have been tracking here in the traffic lab is a hit and run crash that happened here off State Highway 151 in those eastbound lanes at West Over Hills. We do have a crew that's heading out there to the scene working on getting us a live look. So it's been a very busy morning here in the Alamo City, but of course we want our drivers that are waking up early with us to be safe and cautious that this is going to be a little bit of a, a headache if you're heading out the door again in the next few moments. Now let's take a look at these inbound times. If you're coming into San Antonio uh, from perhaps Pleasanton 37, we're looking at 29 minutes. And if you're coming in from Lytle, we're looking at 17 minutes from 35 and coming in from Castroville, a 19 minute commute time on Highway 90. And now let's take one last look here at Transguide where we have this major scene that's working. We're going to be tracking this and giving you updates throughout the morning. But for now, Mike has your forecast. Thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, it's quiet for right now we really didn't have anything developing overnight and as you can see the roads are dry over there by the airport however we just in the past literally a couple of minutes had a few of these showers and uh, maybe a decent downpour that started to pop up one of them just on the right around downtown here on the southeast side down almost uh, heading in toward Von Ormy right now and then a couple more right down 35 halfway between Pearsall and Divine so just a couple of these showers here and there but off to the northwest there is a big big cluster of storms that is shaping up obviously and it looks like it's just kind of working its way right down I-10 Sonora and then moving in toward Junction. So this is going to continue building pretty much to the east and to the southeast over the course of the next couple of hours. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as that continues to work its way in here and it does look like it's going to be coming in probably about in the next uh, four, four and a half hours, something like that here in town. But we'll have a few of those popping up even out ahead of it, obviously. Temperatures are in the mid and upper 60s for the most part around the area, and uh, we will have showers and a few thunderstorms. Again, not everybody sees rain constantly, but pretty good chance for showers and storms uh, throughout the day today. Temperatures once again are going to be staying down in the low 80s today, and yep, more rain for the next few days. We'll take a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Just one day after we learned about hackers targeting one of the country's biggest meat suppliers, two more cyber attacks have come to light affecting mass transit. The question now is what, if anything, is being done about it? ABC's Faith Abube has the details. The list of known cyber attacks threatening to impact American life is growing. In New York City, the nation's largest mass transit agency says in April, its computers were the target of an attack. Officials say hackers linked to the Chinese government tried to exploit security flaws within the transit system, including the city's subways and buses. Probing another country's infrastructure in case they wanted to at some point, if they felt they needed to, flip the switch to uh, deactivate to decommission our, our system, cause disruption. In Massachusetts, 
The ferry system that connects Cape Cod to Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket also confirming it's the victim of a cyber attack. The ferry operator says it's working with federal authorities to find the origin of the hack. It's now asking riders to use cash because its credit card systems are limited. The old system is what she had us use, you know, the old card readers, and that was it. This all coming as the FBI blames a cyber criminal group based in Russia of hacking into the world's largest meat supplier. JBS says it's on schedule to resume production at all of its American plants today. But the day's long shutdown could cause meat prices to climb. Similar to how another hack from a Russian-based group affected U.S. gas supplies and prices last month. There's a lot of speculation as to what's the motivation behind this rash of hacks. Clearly, one of those motivations is to show the United States that the Russians and their proxy groups are capable of doing these things. According to the cybersecurity firm Black Fog, damages from cybercrime could hit $6 trillion this year alone, doubling since 2015. And the White House has not blamed the Kremlin directly, but has suggested that Russia is harboring cyber criminals. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. This morning, we're learning about uh, two human smuggling attempts in Laredo in which U.S. Border Patrol agents took more than 160 undocumented immigrants into custody. Border Patrol says the first incident was just after midnight on Friday. Checkpoint agents found more than 50 people inside a tanker trailer. All were Mexican nationals in, in the U.S. illegally. Hours later, agents found more than 100 undocumented immigrants in a tractor trailer near an I-35 checkpoint. They were from Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Ecuador and the Dominican Republic. The drivers in both incidents are U.S. citizens and were taken into custody with the undocumented immigrants. A new court filing by the attorney for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is citing multiple allegations of misconduct during his trial. Chauvin was convicted on April 20th on all counts in the death of George Floyd. In the 54-page memorandum, defense attorney Eric Nelson says there was prosecutor misconduct, juror misconduct, and witness intimidation that prevented a fair trial. Chauvin's attorney repeatedly argues in the filing that many of those issues could have been corrected if the judge had granted a change of venue. Minnesota's Attorney General's office has until June 9th to file response to that memo. Republican George P. Bush says he's running next year for Attorney General of Texas. The 45-year-old son of former Florida Governor Jeb Bush made the announcement yesterday in Austin. The decision sets up a potentially bruising GOP primary against sitting Attorney General Ken Paxton, who's already served two terms but is shadowed by a securities fraud charge and FBI investigation. Bush is currently the Texas Land Commissioner and is the last member of the Bush dynasty that is still in public office. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding the person they say robbed an area Valero corner store. Now this happened back on May 15th in the 8100 block of Petranco Road near 410 on the city's west side. Now police say this person entered the store and told the clerk that they had a firearm and forced the clerk to activate two Visa gift cards with $500 each. Police say the suspect also took $20 in quarters as well as cigarettes. The suspect then ran away and was not found. If you have any information regarding that case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. Right now it is 438, about 70 degrees. It's a big day for the Smithson Valley Rangers. We're going to have a preview of today's winner take all matchup in Corpus Christi. We're going to want to keep tabs on the weather today. Mike is always tracking a few showers and storms, especially way, way up in the far Texas Hill Country this morning. And as we go to break, we're going to take a live look at the deadly hit and run incident at Highway 151 in Wiseman. Stephen will have an update coming up. Time for a look at morning sports. Smithson Valley Rangers in Corpus Christi, where they'll meet Los Fresnos in a winner take all one game matchup this afternoon. Decide who will go to state in Class 6A high school baseball. That's after the Rangers defeated Eagle Pass 13 to 6 to sweep the regionals, or rather the Eagles in the region four semifinals. And now the team has advanced to the regional finals for the first time since 2005. One of the standouts of the game, Tim Arguello, went four for five with four RBIs. Was also the Rangers starting pitcher in a game that stretched over two days due to weather. Now they have to get by Los Fresnos to get state batter up between Smithson Valley and Los Fresnos. Set for 4 p.m. today at Cabinus Complex down in Corpus Christi. 
to the Class 1A state softball championship game at the McCombs Field up in Austin. The defending champion, Dehennis Cowgirls, taking on Dodge City Hornets. Hornets sting early, pulling ahead 8-1. to one. Cowgirls would try to score a few runs late, but they just ran out of time. The team pulls within four, but it's not enough. Cowgirls bid for a second consecutive title falls short. The final, 8-4. to four. On to Missions Baseball, a big night for San Antonio up in Springfield, Missouri. The Missions hit a season-high three homers, including their first Grand Slam of the year. It all contributed to a stunning 9-2 victory against the Cardinals last night. Missions continued their six-game series at Springfield tonight. First pitch set for 7:05. That's a nice win. I know, yeah, I, and I love we have some morning sports. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> Time now is 442 and about 70 degrees right now. Next, a travel as travel fever sets in for many Americans, we're taking a first look at the best ways to plan a trip that won't break the bank. And welcome back. It's about 445. More people are planning to travel this summer than last year, and that rebound in vacation travel causing prices to rise. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, as travel fever sets in, how to plan a trip that won't break the bank. With more and more Americans vaccinated, it's looking to be the summer of travel, and that means prices are already on the rise. Domestic airfare this summer up 35% from last summer. The average price, 283 bucks. Prices are going to rise about 16% between now and the middle of July. Some destinations are still seeing deals for hotels, down as much as 20% from pre-pandemic rates. Narragansett, Rhode Island, Long Beach, California, Tampa, Florida, and Fort Myers, Naples. This morning, we'll share the best tips for saving money on flights, rental cars, and hotels. Plus, what's causing those extreme wait times whenever you try to call an airline and how do you avoid them? The answer is coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. If you've just now turned on GMSA, we've already got some major traffic troubles out there. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Very busy morning here in San Antonio, and this is one of the big crashes that we are tracking this morning right here. Uh, this is a view from Transguide at I-10 at Wurzbach. Now, let's take a look here and show you what's happening. Again, this is in those eastbound lanes right at Wurzbach. We still have emergency crews that are out there working to investigate a crash that happened. Now, what we know right now is that one man was involved in a single vehicle rollover, and that man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Now, investigators aren't sure exactly how this crash happened, but they say that man actually took out an exit sign at the time that crash happened. But you can see that we do have several emergency crews still out there, even, even some right up here on the overpass. Now let's take a look at the map and see how that's impacting traffic right now. Now this is in those eastbound lanes right at Ramsgate. You can see it's still pretty green back here, but we know a few of our producers had trouble coming into work this morning because of this crash and three lanes are blocked between Hebner and Medical Drive. So do be prepared if you're heading in this direction. This crash is likely still going to be there. Now another crash or another thing we're tracking is this deadly hit and run right here at State Highway 151 eastbound at West Over Hills. Now we do have a crew out there. Asian Vermeer, our photojournalist, is out there with a live look showing you as crews still remain on the scene. Now what we know right now is that a woman in her 30s was found dead after a hit and run on the access road leading up to Wiseman Boulevard off 151. Now there were no witnesses, but TID is still investigating along with SAPD, SAFD, and EMS all still on the scene. You can still see there we have a look where we do have crews that are still out there working to get this scene clear. Now this happened a little bit after two this morning, so it's been there for quite a while and we're going to be keeping a close eye and see how this may be impacting anyone's commute this morning. But let's go ahead and bring it back here to this crash. It's still happening here off I-10 at Warspock. This is another thing we're going to be tracking, guys. It's just been a very busy morning for drivers here in San Antonio. Yes, yeah, that one that, that out there at 151 in Weissman and Asian shot that one unit we were focused in on looked like the crime scene investigator that had just yeah. shown up there. So there are obviously these traffic investigations take quite some time. Another reason I'm glad that we have a camera crew out there. Asian is obviously Transcott has cameras everywhere, yeah. but they can't be everywhere and we can't see everything on all the highways and byways. Yeah, especially in that area. It's a it's kind of a dark area. We were just looking it up in the map. Yeah, it's a very dark at night. All right, Stephen, we'll check back in with you coming up. Mike is standing by with more on showers and storms. Yeah, uh, we are starting to see a couple of showers popping up, uh, not in this picture, obviously. And as you can see, 
Somebody's uh, coming in for a landing right there on runway uh, one four. We do have a couple of uh, showers, a few couple of areas. Now this is going back in about 12 hours and we had this line of showers and even a couple of thunderstorms basically move through the northern portion of the hill country. Things really settled down in behind it, but now starting to fire up and actually fairly quickly uh, this morning. We've got actually a couple of thunderstorms over here on the northeast side over there by 10 1604 on the east and northeast side. Everything's moving up to the north another batch of rain just to the east of the airport and then further on down to the south right around Von Orme. We've got even a couple of thunderstorms that have started to pop up and the, some of those scattered ones further on down to the south more down to the southwest and some of these thunderstorms are already starting to get going and again just uh, 20 minutes ago 15 20 minutes ago none of these were producing any lightning, so they are starting to grow a little bit and everything is out ahead of this big batch of rain out there in the hill country, which is pretty much continuing to work its way down 10. So this will move in to our vicinity in the next few hours, but obviously ahead of it, we've got some of the showers, so the isolated spots of showers and thunderstorms. So again, it's been quiet up to basically this point. Grab an umbrella, grab a rain jacket this morning. Here's pretty much the culprit. You can see this upper low, which is spinning off here to the west of us. And for the most part, that thing hasn't really moved all that much and is not going to move all that much. And so that's why we keep the chance of rain around here. So here is now this tends to I think it's hurrying things along a little bit, but um, as far as initializing this computer model, but it's got that batch of rain continuing to work its way down to the south and east. And then throughout the rest of the afternoon, um, this one's not as bullish on rain this afternoon, but we will have more of these showers around here going into uh, this afternoon and then the next couple of days as well. No, uh, nothing from the Storm Prediction Center right now as far as any severe threat. Of course, I think the biggest thing we're going to have to watch out for, though, is some of the heavier downpours with some of these showers and, of course, the ground being fairly saturated. So runoff and flooding in low-lying areas, if you get one of these hefty downpours, that's going to be an issue. 80 today at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. We have a few of them out there right now. And then later on today, 82 with more showers and storms. Again, i got to emphasize, won't rain constantly, won't rain everywhere, but we've got good chances of rain all the way through uh, tomorrow. Much of the weekend, I think probably more so on Saturday and then even, <coughs> excuse me, uh, more rain going into the middle part of next week. Starts to taper off a little bit, but you can't rule out any rain any one of these days. More so today, I think even tomorrow and Saturday. I, I had a hunch that the pattern was going to start to wind down next week, but maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> Every day because it's added to it. A little yeah, further. There's thunderstorm graphic mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. So. Mother Nature's like, I'll get to it eventually. In a minute. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now, about 452 on your Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday, Thursday. morning. Yep. That's right. Still ahead, a first look at the newest edition of Celebrity Family Feud. Plus, Billie Eilish releases a surprise single and music video. Celebrity Family Feud getting set to air on ABC, plus Billie Eilish releases a new single. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Open your mouth. Stop running. Stop running. Open your mouth. <laughs> it's almost time to play The Feud. Celebrity Family Feud returns this weekend with host Steve Harvey asking the question, and he tells us he does have a favorite category of celeb. I love, I love athletes. I love the musicians are really cool. Comedians, is, you never know what you're going to get, so hang on. The new season of Celebrity Family Feud debuts Sunday night on ABC with the families of actors Rob Lowe and Terrence Howard battling it out. You are nothing but a lost cause. Billie Eilish is a lost cause, or rather, that's the name of her new song. The single just dropping along with a video, which she directed. And it shows a different side of the singer who usually trends toward moodier visuals. This time, she's partying with girlfriends and having fun. A star for Smiths, actor Jimmy Smiths, getting the latest star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and getting emotional and accepting the honor. What a blessed man I am. Just a Puerto Rican kid from Brooklyn who, uh, who is determined to follow his dream and chase passion. The LA Law Emmy winner and Star Wars actor didn't get the full elaborate ceremony because of COVID-19 protocols, but he was able to do some push-ups on his star. And happy birthday to Imogen Poots. The father actress is 32 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's now 4.57. 
and still ahead on GMSA. Do you want some free cash, sports tickets, or some more paid leave? We're going to take a closer look at President Biden's National Month of Action that is meant to get more Americans vaccinated by the July 4th holiday. And would you let a robot do your nails? We'll tell you about one that can do them in less than 10 minutes ahead in Morning Tech Bites. And we all know air pollution can be harmful to the lungs, but did you know it can also leave a negative impact on the brain? Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you about one easy way you might be able to protect yourself. And this is one of the big incidents that's slowing some drivers down this morning. This is I-10 inbound at Worst Box. Stephen Cavazos is tracking that. Mike has more on what could be a somewhat stormy Thursday still to come. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A major crash and a deadly hit and run. I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, we're tracking it all and what you can expect before heading out the door. President Biden declares a national month of action for vaccinations. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at about 70 degrees and we are expecting some rain, but Mike says it's not going to be constant rain, so don't worry. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 3rd of June. Thanks for joining us this morning. I know some people were telling me, I'm so tired of the rain. I'm like, well, I felt like I got a little bit of a break yesterday. That's right. We're going to talk to Mike in just a moment, but uh, traffic is leading things off once again this half hour. Here is our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos. Thanks so much, Mark and Steph. Now, this is a big issue that we've been talking about all morning long here off I-10 at Warsbach is a view from Trans Guy. But taking a closer look here at the wall, we have emergency crews that are out there, and this is because of a single rollover crash that happened just a little bit after two this morning. Now, we know that one man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition, and authorities on the scene do tell us that that man had actually also taken out an exit sign not too far from there. But just take a look there. We have about three lanes that are blocked, and we still have people that are actually heading out the door this morning, moving over to the side for our emergency crews, which is what we want to do because they're going to be out there for quite some time investigating this crash. Again, that man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Now let's show you how that is looking like right now on the maps. This is right in those eastbound lanes of I-10 at Ramsgate Street. Again, three lanes are blocked off between Hebner and Medical, so just be careful if you're heading down that, that direction. This is what we're going to be keeping tabs on throughout the morning. Now another crash that just happened is right over here at 281 northbound at Hildebrand not impacting traffic right now, but this is another thing we'll be closely monitoring throughout the show. But the big one here is this deadly hit and run that happened overnight as well. This is off 151 eastbound at Westover Hills. We have our photojournalist here, uh, Asian Bermia, that does have a live look at that particular crash and just take a look right there. We actually do have it now cleared out, but earlier there was a pretty bad scene there. A woman was found dead on the access road of 151 and police were actually out there along with TID still investigating. Mark and Steph had mentioned this is a very dark area, but once again, we do want to remind people just to be cautious out there. They'll be investigating that, of course, throughout the morning, and we'll be bringing you updates here on GMSA and later in the day. But bringing it back here to the wall at this major crash here off I-10 at Wurzbach, we'll be tracking this again throughout the morning and how that may impact your commute if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. Thank you, sir. And uh, boy, it's uh, starting to fire up already out there this morning. We have a couple of uh, showers, even a few thunderstorms in and around the area. 69 degrees and the dew point has actually dropped down just a little bit. The wind has shifted around because of some of these storms uh, out of the northeast. So it's kind of comfortable. We'll only make it up to 82 today, about 10 below normal and a much better chance for some rain throughout the rest of the day. The aquifer yesterday's count did go up two tenths of a foot and the allergens. Mold had come down from the previous day, but then really shot up 16,520. With all this moisture and mold is going to remain on the high side, given the fact that we've got a whole bunch of rain out there and there's rain being picked up on radar right now. And again, uh, just about an hour ago, there was nothing showing up in this picture. And now, as you can see, we've got uh, showers, even a couple of thunderstorms and that cluster of rain out there. I-10 at uh, 1604 on the east northeast side of town. It is working its way basically along I-10, kind of up to the northeast somewhat. A few showers in behind that right around the uh, 
410 and 35 on the northeast side of town. And then we've got a couple of more of these showers. Now this one tried to pop up, produce a couple of lightning strikes, and now it has sort of settled. But there is some rain out there if you're going down I-35 and then further south west on I-35. More of these showers and thunderstorms. One little cluster right there and a few more even going up in toward you Valley. So we're just starting to see this activity brewing even this early in the morning. And then we've got the big cluster of storms out here well northwest of the hill country, even northwest of Junction as of right now. But this obviously is continuing to work its way down to the southeast. And so uh, looks like um, the way it's developing right now, Rock Springs and uh, Fredericksburg, you may get this first and then it will continue coming down I-10 throughout the rest of the morning. Now, as far as, like I said, the pollen mold is very, very high. And throughout the morning, rain is going to continue to move in and develop. And something going on on the... Uh, a viewer just sent in a, a message that uh, thunder and lightning out in shirts right now. Sure. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much to the viewer that sent that in. Thunder and lightning is being uh, reported out there. More showers and thunderstorms that are going to be moving in throughout the day today. And yeah, more rain around the weekend. Now, like Steph said, it won't rain constantly, but we're still going to have some of those showers and thunderstorms around there, even going into next week. And the thing we're really going to have to watch out for, I think, is the fact that we'll have some heavy downpours. And with the ground saturated, that is just going to be causing a lot of runoff. Closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thanks so much, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find a woman who started shooting at two people just west of downtown. It happened around 1030 last night in the 2400 block of Saunders Avenue near South Zarzamora. Investigators say a man and woman were standing next to a vehicle with a baby inside when the woman drove up and fired several shots out the window. Police say the man was hit in the leg and the woman was hit in the chest. Both managed to get away and were eventually taken to the hospital. No word yet on their conditions. President Joe Biden has declared June a national month of action for vaccinations. The president is now one month away from his self-imposed July 4th deadline to get at least one dose of the vaccine in 70% of Americans. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the details. This morning, President Biden kicking off June with a renewed call to action, promising brighter days ahead if more Americans can roll up their sleeves and get a COVID shot. I promise you we can do this an all-American summer that this country deserves. Right now, 12 states have already met the president's goal for July 4th, with 70% of their adult population receiving at least one dose of the vaccine. But six states are still far behind, at less than 50%. We need everyone across the country to pull together to get us over the finish line. Since April, the U.S. vaccination rate has dropped more than 60 percent, and the country is still averaging 383 COVID deaths a day. We are still seeing COVID patients that are very, very ill, but those patients that we're seeing are unvaccinated. We do have these variants that are spreading, and there's a couple that are particularly contagious. So it's a particularly dangerous time to be unvaccinated at this moment. To help move the needle, the Biden administration announcing new incentives for those who get vaccinated between now and Independence Day. Free child care at four of the nation's largest providers and some YMCAs to help parents while they get the vaccine or recover from side effects. If that's not enough, millions more in cash prizes, free groceries, free flights, Xboxes, and beer. In Ohio, Amazon delivery driver Jonathan Carlisle, now a millionaire just for getting the shot. Still dreaming. Uh, I know I, I, I got a lot of bills to pay, so <laughs> it's the first thing that's going to happen. <laughs> and some more good news as we head into the summer camp season. The American Academy of Pediatrics says weekly COVID cases among young children is at the lowest we've seen in about eight months. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Governor Greg Abbott has issued a disaster declaration for some border counties. The mayors of Laredo and Del Rio agree that more resources are needed for local and federal agencies to address the flow of migrants. But when it comes to dealing or calling a disaster, rather, the mayors say for them the situation is still manageable. Governor Abbott says the declaration provides border counties with funding and strategies they need. And time now is 5.08, and it's about 70 degrees out there. Manicures for $8. We'll tell you about a robot that can give you a manicure in less than 10 minutes, cheaply. Also next, we're going to introduce you to our latest great graduate who already has an impressive resume, and she hasn't even started college yet. And again, we have showers and storms in the San Antonio area right now. Radar showing 
a bit huge chunk of storms moving uh, closer to the Texas Hill Country. Mike's tracking those as well. We'll be right back. Our great grad series continues this morning. We're highlighting local graduates who have gone above and beyond during their time in high school. Today, we introduce you to Medina, Medina Valley High School's Ariana Zuniga, and she's got a pretty impressive resume. Not only is Ariana heavily involved with her school's extracurricular groups, she holds leadership positions in several of them, including Vice President of Business Professionals of America, Secretary for the National Honor Society, and Second Vice President of the FFA. She also devotes extra time to volunteering and giving back to the community. In fact, Ariana was selected for this year's Texas State Board of Education Heroes Award, all for community service. It's a prestigious award only given to 12 students in the entire state for acts of charity and kindness. Ariana's teachers say it is a well-deserved award. I have always like loved helping people and I, it's been ever since I guess my parents just raised me that way to know that what I have is a blessing and I need to give back to the community. She's uh, kind of the light in the room and she definitely uh, is involved in many, many things, but she excels at everything that she's involved in. And I think that's that's a special trait to have in an individual. Ariana plans to attend the University of Texas at Austin in the fall. Go Longhorns! <laughs> where, where she'll study nursing and American Sign Language. Congrats. Did you really have to? Include yeah, that? I think so. Yeah. Good. No apologies. <laughs> Read more about Ariana Sunica and all of our great grads this year to check out KSAT.com. We have all the stories available for you to share and watch with family and friends at any time. And time now is 514 and it's about 70 degrees right now. Still have Vizio out with a new line of affordable TVs still packed with the latest technology. Plus, we're going to show you how Facebook is making it easier for businesses and consumers to communicate. If you have obstructive sleep apnea and you're often tired during the day, you could be missing out on amazing things. Sinosi can help you stay awake for them. Once daily Sinosi improves wakefulness in adults with excessive daytime sleepiness due to obstructive sleep apnea. Sinosi worked for up to nine hours at 12 weeks in a clinical study. Sinosi does not treat the cause of OSA or take the place of your CPAP. Continue to use any treatments or devices as prescribed by your doctor. Don't take Sinosi if you've taken an MAOI in the last 14 days. Sinosi may increase blood pressure and heart rate, which can increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure, or death. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure. Sinosi can cause symptoms such as anxiety, problems sleeping, irritability, and agitation. Other common side effects include headache, nausea, and decreased appetite. Tell your doctor if you develop any of these as your dose may need to be adjusted or stopped. Amazing things happen during the day. Sinosi can help you stay awake for whatever amazes you. Visit Sinosi.com and talk to your doctor about Sinosi today. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook seeking to improve communication between businesses and consumers. It's happening through a number of new tools just unveiled at a developer conference, including several messaging features for businesses. New TVs from the affordably priced Vizio brand now come equipped with voice remotes. They allow you to search for shows, change settings, and launch apps with voice commands. Most models work with Bluetooth, so users don't have to aim at the TV. Prices start at $340. And finally, a quick and easy new way to get a a manicure for eight bucks. This robot can polish your nails in just under 10 minutes, a faster way than a traditional manicure. It uses high-tech 3D cameras and algorithms. For now, it doesn't cut or shape nails, but those features may be coming soon. Nailed it. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> well done, Andrew. Yeah, that's cute. I don't know about that. We'll see how that develops. Speaking of developing situation, we uh, started out traffic coverage super early this morning for a reason. Where's what's the latest? Well, we still have this issue mark here on I-10 at Wurzbach. The view from Transcott shows that traffic is starting to pick up this morning. Taking a closer look here at the wall, we can see that we have a few lanes blocked off. Now, as we've been telling our viewers that this is all resulted, this is resulted, that is, from a single vehicle rollover that happened a little bit after 2 this morning. Now, we know that driver was taken to University Hospital, but in critical condition, but investigators on the scene do tell us that he actually also took out an exit sign on the way uh, while he that crash was happening, and we know that a few of our producers 
producers got caught in this mess. So as you can see, these lanes have been blocked off for quite a while here in these eastbound lanes of Wurzbach. Now taking a look here at the map, it's right at Ramsgate Street and do expect those lanes to be closed between Hebner and Medical. So this is something that has been out there for quite a while now, and it's likely it's going to be out there a little bit uh, longer this morning because we know investigators will continue to remain on the scene trying to figure out how all of this happened. Now another crash that came up here was right at 281 northbound at Hildebrandt, but this popped up just a little while ago in our system. It's just past East Bassey. This is where we're starting to see traffic build up here. We're not sure if this is two separate crashes. Again, this just popped up in our system, but we will be monitoring that to see exactly how that is going to be impacting anybody's drive time this morning. Now let's jump over to another serious situation that happened overnight. A deadly hit and run here off 151 eastbound at West Over Hills. A woman's body was found in the middle of the street there. Now investigators had remained on the scene for quite a while. Uh, Mark stuff, you had mentioned that this is a very dark area and you know actually they just cleared that scene up, but this was a deadly hit and run. And of course that investigation is just kicking off. So we will of course bring you more information on air and online at ksat.com. One last look here at I-10 at Wurzbach eastbound where we still have these lanes blocked off. It's going to be a pretty busy morning for anybody heading in this direction, but of course we'll get you through your drive. Thank you, Stephen. We're starting to see a few showers now. Yeah, some including right here in the San Antonio area. Yeah, and I was just looking at the this picture, which uh, about an hour ago looked pretty good. But notice how there's a bit of a sheen on the uh, headlights on those cars, at least in the eastbound lanes of 410 over there by the airport. And there was a little bit of rain being reported at the airport in uh, the past half an hour. 63 comfort Bernie stage. Temperatures are down ever so slightly thanks to some of these storms that have moved on through here. And we did. We've gotten a little bit of a a little surge of some drier air coming in here, so that's lower dew point temperatures somewhat, and that's due in part to some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms that have started to work their way through the area. So uh, this, again, was there was nothing out there earlier this morning, about say an hour ago, and then all of a sudden some of these uh, cells started to pop up. And we uh, actually had a viewer that said right around shirts, there was some lightning being, uh, well, they probably hear it out there, and you can see some of these showers. Now these are starting to weaken a little bit as it moves in towards New Berlin, Marion, but still a lightning strike or two, and even a couple of little sprinkly showers right here in town. So. Just assume that a lot of the roads are going to be damp this morning, and then that little system, that little cell right down there around Von Ormy in the southwest side of Bear County, it started to pop up, and now it's sort of dying off just a little bit. There are more down here to the southwest, right around Carrizo Springs, and even a couple of lightning strikes with those. A little further up in toward Uvalde, Brackettville, some of these showers are developing. These are kind of moving up to the northeast, and then up here further to the northwest, there's that huge cluster of storms and these uh he's got some pretty good downpours with them up here just in the north of junction and most of that is spreading to the east and somewhat to the southeast and as you can see now one or two popping up there around uh rock spring so this will continue to work its way basically down i-10 throughout the rest of the morning which is what a couple of uh, computer models are indicating that we'll have more of these showers throughout the rest of the afternoon and maybe a little bit of a break in the action here and there. Also, take note as far as watching this, when I put this in motion, there is somewhat of a counterclockwise movement to some of these showers around here. So that's the low, which is kind of just hanging around on top of us. Here's a different computer model. And again, this is the one that tends to kind of broad brush things. But what you can take away from this is the fact that, yes, we will continue to have more rain around here, even in through the weekend. Won't rain constantly. Not everybody's going to see it, but there are going to be some pockets of some heavier downpours. And that's, I think, going to be the biggest concern is the fact you get one of these, these thunderstorms that dumps a lot of rain very quickly, maybe an inch or two inches of rain. And with the ground saturated, that's uh, the runoff is going to be a problem as throughout even next or next the weekend, pardon me, and going into the first Part of next week. 80 today at noon, a couple of showers, thunderstorms. Same thing later on this afternoon. We stay in the low 80s, well below normal. So that's one of the uh, pluses from this is temperatures are definitely being held down. And all the way through the weekend into the next week, we are going to have those chances for rain. Again, not constantly, not everyone, but um, yeah, there's going to be some rain around here. If you have outdoor plans, have a plan B. <laughs> That's good advice. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. 523, about 70 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, we're going to tell you why Lady Gaga is postponing her world tour again. Plus, another Hollywood actor gets a star on the Walk of Fame.
526, welcome back. Entertainment news now from Tinseltown to the French Riviera. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Jodie Foster is getting a double honor at this year's Cannes Film Festival. The two-time Oscar winner is set to be the guest of honor at the opening ceremony July 6th, where the actress and director will receive the honorary Palme d'Or in recognition of her brilliant artistic journey. Lady Gaga's Little Monsters will need a bit more patience. She's postponed her Chromatica Ball world tour a second time. In a message to fans, Lady Gaga said some parts of the world are opening up post-pandemic, but others aren't ready. So until all global dates can be confirmed, the tour is postponed until summer 2022. In an industry where even mere employment can be uh, so fleeting, this kind of feels like forever. Jimmy Smits is the latest member of the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The actor was honored with the 2,696th star on the world-famous walk in the film category. The ceremony was virtual, but the star on Hollywood Boulevard is very real. Checking it out in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now it's 527, about 70 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, there's new body cam video of a gun battle between Florida deputies and two kids. It's the latest incident in what's been called an epidemic of gun violence. And we're going to hear from experts who say it's getting worse. Plus, well, a new trend in wellness heating up. We'll tell you about the rise of popularity of infrared saunas around the country and if they really work against things like weight loss and help getting a better night's sleep. Speaking of sleep, how often do you have afternoon drowsiness? Ahead on GMSA at 6, we're going to tell you about some small changes to your diet that can give you a midday boost. Making headlines this morning, new details about a gun battle between Florida sheriff's deputies and two kids. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're in the 70s this morning, and if you're tired of the rain, we're sorry, we're going to get some more rain, but it's not going to be constant rain. Yep, some of you experiencing lightning and thunder as we speak. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 3rd of June. Thanks for joining us. And yeah, we're getting some rain actually right now, Mike. Yes, uh, some folks are seeing a couple of uh, showers. We've had even a couple of uh, lightning strikes out there. You may be awakened by some thunder in spots and then other folks are not getting anything right now, but there is a uh, there's more to come today. So out there by the airport, there's a little bit of a sheen on the highway. There was some light rain reported within the hour. 69 degrees right now. The humidity has dropped down. Uh, wind is sh sort of shifting around out of the northeast and we've got a little bit of a downdraft around some of these uh, thunderstorms around the area. So that's why the uh, humidity has dropped down ever so slightly. And again, there's nothing really showing up about an hour or so ago. Now we do have some of these uh, showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. But notice how the lightning strikes have they started to build up and sort of diminished. So this is continuing to work its way up to the northeast. So if you're going out I-35, you may run into a few of these showers as well as 10 heading off to the east. And then there were a few more down here just kind of moving into the uh, southwest side of Bear County and now sort of fizzle on out, although down here right around 37 and uh, 410, there are a couple of leftover showers more down to the southwest and even a couple of lightning strikes going up in toward you valley and then further to the northwest. This is the uh, the big chunk of rain, obviously, and this is about to reach Rock Springs. Looks like that's going to be probably within at least the next half hour. And then some of these thunderstorms are also going to work their way into Fredericksburg, moving through Junction and then coming down I-10. So Kerrville, you're probably about an hour away from this, and this will continue to work its way down to the uh, southeast and more will be developing out ahead of it. Mold went way up yesterday from the previous day's reading, which had dropped a little bit, still very high, 16,500, low amount of grass out there. And we are going to have temperatures that, well, really won't move all that much today. Maybe about 10, 12, 13 degrees will make it up into the low 80s, still about 10 degrees below normal. More showers and thunderstorms around here. Again, like, like Stephanie was alluding to, it won't rain constantly, but we'll have some steady showers and thunderstorms and even some heavier downpours 
and rain is going to continue in through at least the chance of uh, rain. Pretty good chances of rain continues through the weekend into the first part of next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos and there's a lot going on this morning. What's the latest? Sir? Uh, that is an understatement, Mike. You know, we've been tracking it all here this morning, and this is a view from Transgate at I 10 at Wurzbach, where we've had a major crash that happened overnight. Now, this crash actually was a single rollover crash that took, sent one man to the hospital in critical condition. Now, what's happening right now is that investigators are trying to figure out how this all happened. Now, there are a few lanes that are blocked off. We've actually even spotted some uh, up here on the overpass there, but as the morning's picking up, take a look. We still have people that are heading out the door this morning. Uh, we want to give these guys plenty of room to get that investigation done, but we, will, of course, have been tracking this and taking a look here at the map. This is right here in those eastbound lanes at Ramsgate, and three lanes between Hebner and Medical have been blocked off for that investigation, and it's likely that they will be out there for quite a while. Now, another crash that we're keeping an eye on is right here at 281 northbound at East Bassey. Our system initially picked it up right off Hildebrand, but we found out this is actually happening off East Bassey, not impacting anyone's commute here in these northbound lanes of 281, but again, something that people are going to want to be wary of as they get out their door and get ready to start their day. Now, this is a serious incident that happened over here overnight. That is here at the South uh, State Highway 151 eastbound at West Over Hills. A woman was found dead as a result of what police are saying. It was a hit and run. Now, take a look at some of this video from the scene. It's fairly dark out there, and what they tell us is that that woman was found dead in the Axis Road, uh, but there were no witnesses to this hit and run. However, they are investigating. They were out there for quite a while. This all happened a little bit after two this morning. Another big situation that we will, of course, be following throughout the day. Now, bringing it back here to I-10 at Wurzbach, we will continue to monitor this situation that's happening out there in those eastbound lanes right uh, at Ramsgate, but it looks like they're going to be out there for quite a while. All right, thank you, Stephen, for the update. San Antonio police say they had no choice but to shoot a man overnight. They say he was armed with a knife and threatened those officers. It happened on Casterville Road near Southwest 35th Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, it looks like the scene has cleared, but is the investigation over? Now, the scene is clear. The active part of the investigation is over, but these cases often involve uh, more follow-up, including with the district attorney's office. Now, San Antonio police say the man who they shot has died from his wounds. Police first met up with him around midnight when they answered a call about a disturbance here in the 2300 block of Castroville Road. The call was for someone who had a gun and knife. Police say that man did have a knife and refused to drop it when they ordered him to do so. Instead, they say he moved toward the officers with the knife in his hand. Three of them fired at him, hitting him several times. That man was taken to a hospital but died there. The police say that their investigation is continuing and they have not released any names just yet. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Two kids just 12 and 14 years old facing charges over in Florida. That's after law enforcement say the two opened fire on sheriff's deputies Tuesday night. CNN's Brett Conway has a look at why experts say gun violence is on the rise. A disturbing scene in Volusia County, Florida. Shooting out the rear window toward my direction. Stand by. The sheriff there released a compilation of clips from body camera footage of what happened after he said a 12 year old boy and a 14 year old girl broke into this house and grabbed guns that were inside. Documents show they were runaways from Florida United Methodist Children's Home. Police say the pair fired shots at them multiple times over more than a half hour. The 14 year old girl was shot and badly hurt. Whoever's got a med kit, some type of med kit, I need it up here now in the garage. The 12 year old boy arrested. No deputies were hurt. Where have we gone wrong that 12 year old and 14 year old think it's OK to take on law enforcement? But what happened here is part of a bigger problem in another area of Florida racked by gun violence. <laughs> the top cop is pointing to the courts. Our courts have been shut down. Uh, courts are not holding people accountable. Last year, many of America's largest cities saw a more than 30% increase in homicides amid protests over racial injustice, a collapsing economy, and the pandemic. Mental health issues, uh, we see financial stress and unemployment, and the availability of guns is, is a constant in, in the United States, and we've seen record gun sales again in 2021. With it, gun violence is on the rise too. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. 
Right now it's 538, still about 70 degrees. And still ahead, fresh produce may be getting a little closer to your home. We're going to tell you when some popular dollar stores will be offering fresh food. And let there be light. Up next, how the latest in lighting technology is be used to fight off the coronavirus. And taking a look outside with live can, be prepared for some rain here and there. Go ahead and grab that umbrella. I think that's just a safe thing to do for the next couple of days. We're going to check in with Mike to make sure. Think about how many lights are in your home or at a grocery store, or even in your office. What if they could kill COVID-19? It's a new idea that could be an untapped resource for a more sanitized future. Here's Ursula Perry with the details. From nanoparticles to robots, new innovative tech has been saving lives through the pandemic. And now the med spa Glow Aesthetics is the first location in the country to install COVID killing UVA lights in their ceilings. It felt really exciting to be the first in the country to have these. The lights have two modes that emit different wavelengths from the invisible ultraviolet spectrum. Mode one is UVA, continuously and safely offering virus protection throughout the day. Eight hours under these lights is the equivalent of one minute in the sunlight. Mode two is UVC, a powerful wave with the ability to kill viruses in the air and on surfaces, including the flu, E. coli, mold, and COVID-19 too. Do you just basically go into the room? It has a QR code that you match up to it, and within five minutes, the room's clean. But if it can kill COVID, can it kill you too? These UVC lights have emergency shutoffs to protect users from overexposure. This is just like an extra step that's ensuring us like no matter what, there will be no germs left behind. The opportunities for these lights is endless. The potential for using them anywhere there's light needed. Universities, schools, offices, even retail stores, street lights, inside cars that have ride sharing services, and even movie theaters. You can use that UVC light, especially once everyone has left the theater. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. Interesting. It is interesting. Time now is 543 and about 70 degrees right now. Well, from fancy lights to infrared saunas, a new health pad popping up across our country. After the break, we'll tell you if those sweat boxes really work. 546, infrared saunas popping up across the country. They're the new health craze that claims to list uh, benefits from detox, weight loss, muscle recovery, and even better sleep. But could the risk overheat the benefits? RJ Marcus has the answer. Working up a sweat comes in all shapes and sizes, and now getting the benefits of a good sweat can be as easy as relaxing in an infrared sauna. Traditional saunas heat the air around you, where the infrared saunas heat up your core body temperature. So you are sweating at a cellular level. Sessions last 40 minutes, and proponents believe there is a long list of benefits. So you're stimulating your body in the same way as you would during a cardiovascular workout. Studies show that with a normal sauna, you sweat out approximately 3% toxins and 97% of water. With an infrared sauna, you sweat out 20% of toxins and 80% of water. A 2018 systematic review warns that infrared heat can cause you to become overheated, dehydrated, and your risk of heat exhaustion or heat stroke increases. But in general, infrared saunas are considered safe for most people. I would say to anybody who's nervous about the technology, not to be. This is a very safe and effective way to allow for your body to detox. Doctors warn if you have an implanted medical device or acute or chronic condition, you should consult with your doctor before using an infrared sauna. And if you suffer from low blood pressure, kidney disease, or if you are pregnant, you may be more at risk of dehydration. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, picking up fresh fruit at the dollar store is becoming a reality. Some dollar store chains are actually starting to offer fresh groceries at some locations. Family Dollar has begun selling apples, oranges, other fruit and vegetables at roughly 100 of its more than 7,000 stores. So the company is also selling frozen poultry, pork and beef. As for Dollar General, they now offer produce at more than 1,300 locations. Microsoft expected to unveil the newest version of its Windows operating system later this month. A live stream event set for June 22nd. The announcement tease, quote, join us to see what's next for Windows. Company CEO said last month it would soon share one of the most significant updates to Windows in the past decade. 
and that traffic accident on I-10 still causing some problems for drivers. We'll check in with Stephen Cabasos right now. Yeah, Mark Steph, even causing problems for some of our producers this morning as they were coming into the station. This is the major crash that's been happening and crews are still out there. It happened a little bit after two this morning. Now what we're told is that this is all resulted because of a single vehicle rollover crash that did send one man to University Hospital in critical condition. Now, as you can see here, we have three lanes that are almost blocked off here between Hebner and Medical. This is a view from Transguy, but taking a closer look at our map shows that it's right here. That crash happened in the eastbound lanes right at Ramsgate. Now, not impacting traffic right now, but as the morning has been picking up, we've been seeing more people that have been heading out the door. So you're going to want to give these guys extra room because it's they're going to still continue to investigate how this crash happened. So it's likely they could be there for quite a while. Now, let's jump over here to 151 uh, eastbound at Westover Hills, where we had a deadly hit and run crash. It happened a little bit earlier this morning around two. Take a look at some of this video from that crash crash scene. Now, investigators were out there for quite a while. As you can see, the area is fairly dark. What they tell us is that a woman was found dead in the middle of the street right on those access roads there. Uh, now, they, of course, they are still searching for the driver, but they remained on the scene throughout the early parts of this morning investigating how this all happened. Of course, we will continue to follow this story throughout the day as well, bringing it back here to I-10 at Hebner. This is going to be the big one right now that we're going to continue to monitor throughout the morning. So our drivers, before you get behind the wheel, just keep this in mind and give these guys plenty of room as they continue their investigation this morning. Thank you, Steve and Mike. I was just looking at the radar feature and the Weather Authority app, and we saw that little blip of a storm in eastern Bear County. Yeah, uh, it did produce some lightning. There may be a couple of lightning strikes still left over, and we had some rain reported at the uh, airport within the hour. There may be still a couple of damp spots. Doesn't look like much is showing up, and this is exactly well, what happened to my uh, my ground? Oh, there we go. Okay, pop back. I <laughs> thought we didn't pay our electric bill there for a second. Anyway, yeah, a couple lightning strikes are still showing up right around New Berlin, right there uh, along I-10. There were more lightning strikes being detected earlier with this this one little uh, storm cell, and that's sort of dying down a little bit. But a few showers here and there, and even over just about at 410 and 35, that intersection on the northeast side, we had another cell that was trying to pop up. A couple. Uh, thunderstorms or a couple of claps of thunder, I should say, down there around Von Orme, and then that has sort of uh, fizzled on out right now. More rain down to the southwest, uh, and even as these things try to get going, they sort of get suppressed a little bit. That's not the situation, though, further up to the north. Now, there are those showers just in the north of Brackettville, which are holding together. Those are kind of sliding up to the north, sort of being drawn in toward this cluster of storms. And this is the one that is definitely holding together. As you can see, individual cells appear to be going up to the northeast a little bit, but this whole line is working its way down to the southeast, just moving through junction right now. And still a couple of lightning strikes associated with that. So uh, Rock Springs, just to be on the, the lookout for that and it's going to be a while until it gets maybe an hour or so at least until uh, Kerrville, Fredericksburg you have to start thinking about those but there may be a couple little showers trying to pop up even ahead of that but we'll uh, obviously keep an eye on that. Now one of the computer models going in through the next 24 to 48 hours, some of the rainfall amounts could be on the hefty side. I mean look at that. This is estimating that if these storms do pop up two and a half inches of rain around Pleasanton. Same thing, Gonzalez. And then going into uh, tomorrow evening, some areas could pick up two to four inches of rain. Now, this is obviously on definitely the high side of what rainfall amounts could be, but we could see some hefty downpours around here, and that's going to be the issue as far as uh, flooding is concerned because obviously we've got a moist ground. The ground is pretty well saturated around here, so anything is just definitely going to be running off, and we'll continue to keep that chance of rain, like I said, around and even through the weekend. And the culprit is really down here to the south. We've got that low, which is parked just off to the west of us right now. That's going to move over and sort of set up camp almost right on top of us, and that's going to be hanging around here in through the weekend and really not moving all that far. Just as it starts to maybe get on out of here, there's another little bit of a low that wants to develop even going into the middle part of next week. And so really that's going to be keeping rain chances around here even in through the middle of next week. 
we were, what, two months ago? Couldn't buy rain. Now we've got plenty of it out there. 80 at noon. Showers, thunderstorms. Uh, we'll have a few of them scattered about the area throughout the rest of today. Maybe a couple of heavy downpours. Now there isn't a severe threat right now. Nothing from the Storm Prediction Center for today. But of course, heavy downpours, any lightning or any thunderstorms, you know, you could have some high winds, some gusty winds out there. But going into the next a couple of days, we'll still continue to have more showers and thunderstorms even through the weekend. Again, emphasize not constantly, not everybody, but decent rain chances do exist even through the middle of next week. Getting used to it. Thank you, Mike. 5.53 on your Thursday morning. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3, 275, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 2762, Fireball 8. Cash 5 number 6, 8, 11, 20, 29, Lotto Texas 22, 33, 44, 45, 47, 54. And Powerball 6, 7, 11, 66, 67, Powerball 19, Power Play 3. Today on SA Live, cut it out or oh my lanta. Do those phrases ring a bell? We're having a little celebrity chat. One of the stars of Full House, Bob Saget, touring the country doing stand-up routines, and that includes San Antonio. But stand-up started a long time ago, before he was Danny Tanner. I started doing stand-up when I was about 16 or 17, and then I was the host at the Comedy Store my whole 20s. So my people I hung out with every night were Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, um, Billy Crystal, Michael Keaton. The apple doesn't fall far, and I was like that. My stand-up was more like that, but then I would go on TV, and I was thrilled to get the job on Full House. Jen Tobias Strusky chats with actor comedian Bob Saget about his passion for comedy. He'll be at the LOL Comedy Club this weekend. Watch SA Live today at 1 for more details. Right now, you're watching DMSA, and in our next hour, a man fighting for his life after a rollover crash. We will have more from the scene. Plus, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers looking for your help to solve a robbery, and you could get a reward. And with the latest on overnight shooting involving San Antonio Police, Katrina Weber is standing by with a live report. And we'll check back in with Stephen Cavazzo says what has been a busy morning, especially on I-10 eastbound in the Hebner area. Still see the flares are out. SAPD still on the scene. It'll get you updated on the slowdowns next. San Antonio police say words did not work. They say they had to shoot and kill a man who was armed with a knife. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the details coming up. Facebook getting friendlier for businesses. We'll take a look at some of the new features. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, there are a few showers here and there and expecting more today and this weekend. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, hope you slept well. It is Thursday, June 3rd. Happy Thursday, thanks for joining us. And yeah, we're expecting more rain over the weekend and today and tomorrow, but not constant, so that's the good news there. Some people have heard thunder, seen some lightning this morning right here in the San Antonio area, Mike. Yeah, about, uh, say, 4 o'clock this morning, there was nothing out there on radar, and then these little showers started to pop up. A couple of thunderstorms popped up. They haven't lasted all that long. Uh, still, a few, you know, folks said they heard some, you know, a little clap of thunder here and there. And uh, there have been a couple of showers out by the airport, so there may be some damp spots on the roads in and around town this morning. Here's what's going on on radar right now. And and that one little cluster on the uh, northeast side, which has, well, it's spread out just a little bit as far as the aerial coverage of rain, but it is definitely weakened and there aren't any lightning strikes being detected right now. But a couple of, uh, you know, decent downpours, and that's what we're really going to have to watch out for. Where it does rain, it can rain a whole bunch. And so that's why even in the next 24 to 48 hours, some of the rainfall totals could be, you could have those spots with some very heavy, you know, two, three inches of rain or even more than that, especially down to the uh, southeast. Down to the southwest, we've got a few more of these showers that are developing and you can see even up in toward Uvalde and then further up to the northwest. There's that line of showers and thunderstorms. Now, overall, it looks like some of the intensity may be easing a little bit, but I mean, we still have some decent downpours out here, those red areas and a lot of lightning strikes. So this is slowly working its way down to the uh, southeast and will continue to move in our direction throughout the course of the morning. As far as temperatures will stay pretty steady, uh, mid upper 60s, some low 70s this morning, and then won't gain all that much 
about 10, 12 degrees throughout the course of the day. We'll have a few showers and thunderstorms throughout the rest of the morning and then even this afternoon. And again, heavy downpours are what we're really going to have to watch out for and only the low 80s for a high temperature today, which is about 10 degrees below normal. Again, like Stephanie was alluding to, it won't be raining, you know, 24 seven, but we have good rain chances through the weekend, even going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority getting ready to hit the road. Stephen Cavazos been a, talking about a whole bunch this morning. Yeah, Mike, this has been the crash that's been out here off I-10 East for a few hours now, and we've actually spotted first responders here at Transguide setting up these flares, making sure that drivers stay out of the way as they investigate this scene. Again, it's been out there for quite a while. Uh, let's take a closer look on the map and see where that's actually at. That crash happening here off Ramsgate eastbound right of I-10. Uh, you can see traffic already starting to build up a little bit as the morning is starting to pick up. I believe we do have some video on the ground from when that scene occurred. You could take a look here. Uh, now, what we know right now is that this is all because of a single vehicle rollover crash that sent one man to University Hospital in critical condition. Now, the reason why we still see investigators out there is because they're trying to figure out how all of this happened. They say the man had actually took it, take, uh, took out an exit sign. Pardon me when that crash happened, but you can see that vehicle has rolled over right there on the scene. Of course, first responders again are still out there investigating. This all happened a little bit after two this morning. It's been several hours that they've been out there on the scene, but let's go ahead and bring it back here to our inbound times right now. If you are going to be waking up with us here in the next few moments, let's see what you can expect coming into downtown San Antonio. 27 minutes coming in from Bulverde. If you're coming in from Bernie, we're looking at 24 minutes on I-10 and Castroville 19 minutes right now, but bringing it back here to Transguide. If you are coming down I-10, do expect these lane closures here at least between Hebner and medical as we still have our investigators out there working to figure out how this crash happened. Guys. Stephen, thank you very much. New this morning, San Antonio police say they tried everything to avoid shooting a man overnight, but in the end, that's what they had to do. That man died from his wounds. Katrina Weber is live where it happened on Castorville Road near Southwest 35th Street. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police say he was armed with a knife. Well, that's right. According to Chief William McManus, it was a large knife with about a 10 inch blade. Now, officers were answering a call around midnight for a disturbance. Uh, that is when they found the man here at uh, Southwest 35th and Castroville Road. They say that the call was about someone who had a gun and knife. Chief McManus says that they found the man standing near a family dollar store again here in the 2300 block of Castroville Road. At some point, he says that man pulled the knife out of his backpack and began moving toward the officers. McManus says the officers tried to back away, moving all the way to the edge of the street. He says the man kept coming, though, and that's when the three officers pulled out their guns and fired. That man was hit in his upper body, taken to a hospital, but he died of his wounds. Now, Chief McManus did tell us that the officers involved included uh, one who has been with the force only about a month, as well as two who have been veterans for at least a decade. And so far, no names have been released. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, firefighters responded to a house fire on the east side overnight. It happened just before 2 this morning in the 2300 block of East Houston Street. That's by Breath of Life Church. Multiple fire units re responded to the scene. The estimated cost of damage and what exactly caused that fire remain unknown. Just one day after we learned about hackers targeting one of the country's biggest meat suppliers, two more cyber attacks have come to light affecting mass transit. The question now is what, if anything, is being done about it? ABC's Faith Abube has the details. The list of known cyber attacks threatening to impact American life is growing. In New York City, the nation's largest mass transit agency says in April, its computers were the target of an attack. Officials say hackers linked to the Chinese government tried to exploit security flaws within the transit system, including the city's subways and buses. Probing another country's infrastructure in case they wanted to at some point, if they felt they needed to, flip the switch to... Uh, deactivate to decommission our, our system, cause disruption. In Massachusetts, 
The ferry system that connects Cape Cod to Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket also confirming it's the victim of a cyber attack. The ferry operator says it's working with federal authorities to find the origin of the hack. It's now asking riders to use cash because its credit card systems are limited. The old system is what she had us use, you know, the old card readers, and that was it. This all coming as the FBI blames a cyber criminal group based in Russia of hacking into the world's largest meat supplier. JBS says it's on schedule to resume production at all of its American plants today. But the day's long shutdown could cause meat prices to climb. Similar to how another hack from a Russian-based group affected U.S. gas supplies and prices last month. There's a lot of speculation as to what's the motivation behind this rash of hacks. Clearly, one of those motivations is to show the United States that the Russians and their proxy groups are capable of doing these things. According to the cybersecurity firm Black Fog, damages from cybercrime could hit $6 trillion this year alone, doubling since 2015. And the White House has not blamed the Kremlin directly, but has suggested that Russia is harboring cyber criminals. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. A new court filing by the attorney for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, citing multiple allegations of misconduct during his trial. Chauvin was convicted on April 20th on all counts in the death of George Floyd. Defense attorney Eric Nelson says there was prosecutor misconduct, juror misconduct, and witness intimidation that prevented a fair trial. Chauvin's attorney repeatedly argues in the filing that many of those issues could have been corrected if the judge had granted a change of venue. Nelson said that violated Chauvin's rights and a new trial should be granted. Minnesota's Attorney General's office has until June 9th to file a response to that memo. Republican George P. Bush says he's running for Attorney General of Texas next year. The 45-year-old son of former Florida Governor Jeb Bush made the announcement yesterday up in Austin. The decision sets up a potentially bruising GOP primary against sitting Attorney General Ken Paxton, who has served two terms but is shadowed by securities fraud charges and an FBI investigation. Bush is currently Texas Land Commissioner and is last member of the Bush dynasty still in public office. And time now is 6.09 and about 69 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, we introduce you to a soon-to-be Texas Longhorn. We'll hear about her impressive list of high school achievements. And taking a look outside with a live cam, there's rain here and there, so be prepared. Grab that umbrella just in case. We'll be right back. And good morning, welcome back. It's about 6.13 now. Our great grad series continues this morning and we're highlighting local graduates who have gone above and beyond during their time here in high school. Today we introduce you to Medina Valley High School's Ariana Suniga. She's got a pretty impressive resume. Not only is she heavily involved with the school extracurriculars, she holds leadership positions in several of them, including Vice President of the Business Professionals of America, Secretary for National Honor Society, and Second Vice President of FFA. She also devotes extra time to volunteering and giving back to the community. In fact, Ariana was selected for this year's Texas State Board of Education Heroes Award, all for her community service. It's a prestigious award only given to 12 students in the entire state for acts of charity and kindness. Ariana's teachers say it's a well-deserved award. She's always serving her community, her school, um, and her fellow students. She's always willing to give and she's always willing to go the extra mile for everybody. I have always like loved helping people. And uh, it's been ever since, I guess, my parents just raised me that way to know that what I have is a blessing and I need to give back to the community. Congratulations. And Ariana plans to attend the University of Texas at Austin in the fall. Go Horns! Where she'll study nursing and American Sign Language. Wow, that's fantastic. Tough school to get into. Congratulations, Ariana. Summer vacation here in our great grad series is finally wrapping up. We'll look back at all the students we have featured. Head on over to ksat.com. All right, Smithson Valley Rangers are in Corpus Christi where they'll meet up with Los Fresnos in a winner take all one game matchup this afternoon. Decide who goes to the state in Class 6A high school baseball. It's after the Rangers defeated Eagle Pass 13 to 6 to sweep the Eagles in the Region 4 semifinals. And now the team has advanced to the regionals for the first time since 2005. One of the standouts of the game, Tim Arguello went 4 for 5 with 4 RBIs. It's also the Rangers' starting pitcher in a game that stretched over two days due to bad weather. 
Now they have to get by Los Fresnos to get the state batter up between Smithson Valley and Los Fresnos set for 4, B, 4 p.m. today. Cabinus Field uh, up in Corpus Christi. Now to the Class 1A softball championship game at McCombs Field in Austin. The defending champion DeHennis Cowgirls taking on the Dodge City Hornets. Hornets would sting early, pulling ahead 8-1. to one. Cowgirls would try to score a few runs late, but they just ran out of time. Team pulls within four, but it's not enough. Cowgirls bid for a second consecutive title fall short. Final 8-4. to four. Not many kids in their high school career get to go to state three times pretty much in a row. We probably would have gone a fourth time if COVID would have happened. And yeah. I was lucky enough to be one of those kids to come back my freshman, sophomore, and my senior year. And it means a lot, even though we got second place. On to Missions Baseball. Big night for San Antonio in Springfield, Missouri. Missions hit a season-high three homers, including a first grand slam of the season. It contributed to a fantastic 9-2 victory against the Cardinals last night. Missions continued their six-game series at Springfield tonight. First pitch is set for 7.05. And that's a look at morning sports. Very, very nice win. And let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso's traffic is building there on I-10 and Heemner where the accident was earlier. Yeah, that's definitely right stuff. You know, as the morning picks up, we're seeing more people that are heading out the door, heading on down I-10. And this is going to be a big issue as that morning does progress. Now, taking a look, look here at Transguide, this is a view from I-10 at Heemner. We've been trying to get different angles. This was a major crash that happened overnight. And what we want to do is go ahead and show you some of that video from when that crash happened. Now, a man is, of course, fighting for his life. Now, authorities do tell us that this was a single vehicle rollover crash that happened a little bit after 2 a.m. right at I-10 near Ramsgate Street, and that's near Medical Center. Now, that man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Now, it's unclear what caused that crash, but investigators are still out there this morning working to figure out how all of that happened. We spotted a few there that were actually on the, the overpass just trying to investigate again. It's not clear how this happened, but it's definitely causing a buildup here on our roadways here. We want to bring it back to trans guide and show you again that's right in these eastbound line lanes of I-10 not at Ramsgate that is and we have three lanes that are blocked off between Hebner and Medical Drive doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon but of course neither will we we will continue to monitor this throughout the morning and see how that's going to be impacting your drive this morning. A busy morning for you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Mike has a lot to talk about yet again this morning. Yeah, we don't, uh, you know, we've seen some showers around the area so far, a couple of thunderstorms as well. And right in and around the metropolitan area, there may be, you know, some damp roads. We've had a few of those uh, little sprinkles out there. Temperatures are, well, actually, the humidity has dropped in some spots. Temperature right now is at 68 here in town, even low 60s in parts of the hill country. And of course, we do still have a couple of uh, 70s out there. And, uh, well, headlines, a lot to talk about a lot of rain around a couple of showers around this morning, maybe a thunderstorm or two scattered showers and thunderstorms today. And then going into the weekend, we are going to have some more rain Again, emphasize not constantly, not everywhere, but pretty good chances for showers and thunderstorms and into next week. And the biggest thing we're gonna have to watch out for is going to be the heavy downpours and just, you know, heavy downpour and then another heavy downpour. And so it's going to be a cumulative effect around the area, especially given the fact that we've had a lot of rain and grounds pretty well saturated. So looking off to the uh, northwest right now, plenty of clouds. We did see a little bit of a sheen on the highway earlier. There were a couple of showers that moved through the airport area and uh, the system which had produced some Lightning strikes over here on the northeast side. Just a couple leftover showers over there by Seguin as of right now. Now a couple more showers are popping up there on the uh, west side of Bear County in toward Castroville. Down to the southwest, we've got a couple of more showers. There were some thunderstorms, a uh, couple of lightning strikes down here. Those have kind of fizzled on out, but notice how this batch is really starting to grow here in northeastern Uvalde County, kind of sliding to the north east and more of these spots are developing then out ahead of it. And then we've got this big line of uh, showers and thunderstorms now moving through junction. So Fredericksburg, you're going to be getting this couple of those spots right there around Rock Springs. Get ready for those. Um, not a lot of lightning, but uh, we will see some again, some decent downpours around here and going through the weekend and first part of next week. Now there's going to be the spots where you get two, three, four inches of rain and maybe <clears throat> excuse me, 
even a couple of bullseyes with some very, very heavy rain, especially down to the southeast. So that's where you're really going to have to be on the lookout for it. And it's this low. You can see a bit of a counterclockwise rotation out here to the west of us. That's the one that's just going to sort of hang out and it's going to be the, the triggering mechanism for these showers and some of these thunderstorms. Then another one, a little bit of a low is going to try and take its place in the middle part of next week, which will keep rain chances in the forecast. 80 at noon showers, couple of thunderstorms here and there, and we'll see more showers and thunderstorms around the area scattered about a couple of heavier downpours can't be ruled out temperatures. Again, we haven't we don't have a normal high temperature anywhere on this seven day forecast. 86 on Tuesday, 85 Wednesday, and uh, we keep good rain chances in through the weekend. And then again, even into next week, getting heavy downpours and you know runoff, some minor flooding in places will be the, the concern going in through the weekend next week. We'll have to watch out for that. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. 620, about 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, air pollution is bad for your lungs. And as it turns out, it's also bad for your brain. How researchers say you might be able to protect yourself. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. Airwick. Our new scented oils give you our best smelling scents. Now crafted with more natural ingredients and infused with essential oils that are 100% natural. Give us one plug and connect to nature. Facebook unveiling a number of new tools for businesses. These include several messaging features that will help improve communication between businesses and consumers. Vizio releasing new TVs with voice remotes. The remotes will allow to search for shows, change settings, and launch apps with voice commands. Most models work with Bluetooth, so users don't have to aim at the TV. That price starts at $340. There's now a quick and easy way to get a manicure. This robot can polish your nails in just uh, 10 minutes for $8. It uses high-tech 3D cameras and algorithms. For now, it doesn't cut or shape nails, but those features may be coming soon. In recent years, the world has made greater strides towards being more environmentally friendly, but there's still a ton of junk in the air we all breathe in every day. Now, according to experts, extended exposure to city smog and traffic exhaust not only impacts the lungs, but can impair mental performance. Researchers from Columbia University say simple over-the-counter drugs like aspirin might be able to counter these negative effects on the brain. Studies in the past have found air pollution is especially dangerous for older adults Inhaling the toxins in the air can possibly lead to cognitive decline, even the onset of dementia. Researchers examined just under 1,000 older men in the Boston area. The team looked at the link between their exposure to black carbon and their cognitive performance. Out of the group, the men who were taking aspirin experienced fewer mental impairments. Researchers say there's not a clear direct link between aspirin and brain function, but they say the drug may offset the changes in blood flow to the brain that pollution can uh, affect. And time now is 626 and it's about 69 degrees out there. Summer is almost officially here. Are you looking for some ways to beat the heat? We've got some ideas for you. And the latest on an overnight shooting involving San Antonio police. Our Katrina Weber is standing by with the latest. And Stephen will have an update on the situation now with uh, more folks on the road. We are seeing heavier slowdowns and the flare line is still out at I-10 inbound at Hebner. He'll have an update coming up. San Antonio police say they pulled their guns after a man pulled a knife on them. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man was shot and killed overnight. I'll have that story. A look at some of the top foods to include in your diet if you're looking for more energy. And outside with uh, live cam this morning, looking back towards downtown. Morning clouds, we've had a few showers and storms, and there's a whole bunch of activity way up in the far extremes of the Texas Hill Country. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, June 3rd. Thanks for joining us today. It's also been a busy traffic morning. Stephen is standing by with an update there. But first up, 
Uh, batter up, Mike Oster H. Yeah, hey. uh, you know, earlier there was nothing on radar, and then things started popping up, and I thought it was going to be more of a, a wet commute, but we are starting to then things settle down, but now a few more showers are popping up, and then we're going to look at that uh, big cluster of storms that uh, Mark was talking about out there to the northwest. So it looks like the road has kind of dried up uh, somewhat out there at the airport. There were a few showers earlier, and so it was kind of damp. 68 degrees right now, and two points down to 62. So we have dried out ever so slightly. It's a little more comfortable when you step outside this morning and just kind of uh, sitting back and looking at the big picture of things, how this area of rain fizzled on out, but then there's the more of that, which is starting to uh, pop up. We had some of those thunderstorms out there to the east, but then now we've got these showers uh, right there, uh, just about crossing 90 on the far west side of town, just around Von Orme, a few more further on out to the west, Concan, Utopia, Sabinal, a couple of those showers near Dehennis, and everything is kind of sliding up to the north. Even a few heavy downpours are mixed in as well. And then further up to the north, there's the, and again, it's it's like these showers kind of being drawn in toward this. A lot of the lightning strikes, though, doesn't look like there's quite as many as what there were earlier this morning. But as you can see, with some of those red and even purple areas, there's some pretty hefty downpours with this. Now a couple of showers have even started to develop in and around Fredericksburg. So this was all going to continue to kind of work its way down to the southeast, continue to develop throughout the course of the next couple of hours. Mold is very, very heavy in yesterday's count. The updated reading is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. But yeah, that definitely went up from the, uh, the previous day. And uh, rain is going to continue to move in. A couple of showers, some heavy downpours. That'll be the biggest concern, not only today, but also as we go on in through the weekend and even the first part of next week, because that cumulative effect of some of those heavier downpours, more showers and storms around today, more rain over the weekend. Again, not constantly, but pretty good rain chances for it. And then even into uh, next week, we're going to have more scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms, some heavy downpours. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavazos, and boy, it has been a mess this morning. Yeah, definitely a mess, uh, Mike, but we're starting to see things actually clear up in just a few moments that you were talking. We saw it uh, looks like these lanes are opening up here at I-10 at Hebner. Taking a closer look here at the wall, we did have a major crash that happened overnight that had first responders out there for several hours. Now, we still have a few remnants of of that crash, all these road flares where lanes were blocked off for quite a while. But let's take a look at some of this video shot overnight. Now, this was a rollover crash, as you can see right there on your screen, that sent one man to the hospital in critical condition. Now, it all happened just after 2 a.m. on I-10 East at Ramsgate Street. Now, this was near the medical center. That man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Now, investigators were out there throughout the morning to try to figure out exactly how this all happened. But, of course, uh, that is why we saw Still saw a lot of those road flares out there because the investigation was underway for several hours. It's not clear what caused that crash, but they do tell us that man actually took out an exit sign as well when it all happened. So hopefully he's recovering OK this morning. But uh, taking a look at our inbound times right now, let's take a look. If you were coming in from I-10 on Bernie, we're looking at still possibly a 25 minute commute time coming into downtown San Antonio. 27 minutes if you're coming in from 281 from Bolverde. And if you are coming in from New Braunfels on 35 right now, we're seeing a delay there. It's about a 49 minute commute right now, so very busy here on the traffic front. One last look here at Transguide at I-10 at Hebner. Things are picking up once again, but be careful out there, guys, because we want to see you get to your place safely. Thank you, Stephen. The investigation into an overnight shooting by San Antonio police is far from over, but the chief says it appears officers had to shoot a man who was threatening them with a knife. The deadly meetup happened in a parking lot on Castroville Road near Southwest 35th Street. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, do we know anything about the man who was killed? No, his name has not been released just yet. The only thing we've been told is that he's someone who police encountered outside this family dollar store, that he had a knife and refused to put it down. Well, there were three officers who answered that call around midnight. It was for a disturbance involving someone who had a gun and knife. Chief William McManus says the officers attempted to talk to a man who they found leaning up against a family dollar store in the 2300 block of Castroville Road. But he says things quickly took a wrong turn. The man went into his backpack and pulled out a, a knife with about, a, I guess, about a 10 inch blade on it. And he started advancing toward the officers. 
McManus says those officers tried to back off, moving all the way to the edge of the street, but he says the man kept coming, still with the knife in his hand. At that point, he says all three officers pulled out their guns and fired, hitting the man in his upper body. That man taken to a hospital where he died. Again, no names released at this point, but the chief did tell us that the officers involved included a rookie, someone who's been with the force only about a month, as well as two veterans who have been with the department at least a decade. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police trying to find a woman who started shooting at two people just west of downtown overnight. Happened around 1030 in the 2400 block of Saunders near South Zarzamora. SAPD says a man and woman were standing next to a vehicle with a baby inside when the woman drove up and fired several shots out of a window. Police said the man was hit in the leg. The woman was hit in the chest. Both managed to get away and were eventually taken to a hospital. We have no word on their conditions. And questions remain after another shooting on the city's east side. It happened just before 1030 last night at Burnett Street in Hudson. That's near I-10. Police say they don't have much to go on, but they say someone was shot in the back and the hand. Those people were taken to the hospital. No word on their condition. Gun violence is not just a hot topic here in the Alamo City. Middle schoolers are facing charges in the state of Florida this morning after police say the pair aged 12 and 14 opened fire on deputies Tuesday night. Experts are saying gun violence in our country is on the rise. CNN's Britt Conway gives us a look at why. A disturbing scene in Volusia County, Florida. Shooting out the rear window toward my direction. Stand by. The sheriff there released a compilation of clips from body camera footage of what happened after he said a 12-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl broke into this house and grabbed guns that were inside. Documents show they were runaways from Florida United Methodist Children's Home. Police say the pair fired shots at them multiple times over more than a half hour. The 14-year-old girl was shot and badly hurt. Whoever's got a med kit, some type of med kit, I need it up here now in the garage. The 12 year old boy arrested. No deputies were hurt. Where have we gone wrong that 12 year old and 14 year old think it's okay to take on law enforcement? But what happened here is part of a bigger problem. In another area of Florida racked by gun violence, <laughs> the top cop is pointing to the courts. Our courts have been shut down. Uh, courts are not holding people accountable. Last year, many of America's largest cities saw a more than 30% increase in homicides amid protests over racial injustice, a collapsing economy, and the pandemic. Mental health issues, uh, we see financial stress and unemployment, and the availability of guns is, is a constant in, in the United States, and we've seen record gun sales again in 2021. With it, gun violence is on the rise too. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. More local news. A woman is dead this morning after she was hit by a car. It happened around 2.15 this morning on Wiseman near Highway 151. That's on the far west side, not far from SeaWorld. San Antonio police say they found the woman in her 30s dead at the scene. Investigators say there were no witnesses and they do not have any suspects at this time. Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a person they say robbed a Valero corner store. It happened on May 15th in the 8100 block of Petranco near 410 on the city's west side. That's where police say the suspect entered the store and told the clerk they had a firearm and forced the clerk to activate two Visa gift cards worth $500 each. As a suspect also took $20 in quarters and a few cigarettes. If you have any information about the incident, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward. And time now is 639 and it's about 69 degrees out there. Have you found yourself feeling tired or fatigued in the middle of the day? Still ahead on GMSA foods you can add to your diet that might be able to give you the energy boost you need. And welcome back. It's about 642. So are you feeling tired or worn out in the middle of the day? So that's pretty common. So what's one of the best ways to fight fatigue? Well, it's food. The quality of the food you eat is crucial when it comes to your energy levels throughout the day. That's why we're breaking down some expert top picks for energy packed foods. Starting off our list, bananas may be the best food for more energy. They're an excellent source of carbs, potassium and vitamins. Fatty fish like tuna and salmon is also our great choices to keep your drive going. 
Brown rice and sweet potatoes also pack a powerful punch if you're looking for a boost. Another option, dark chocolate. Yay, it has higher cocoa content than milk chocolate and experts say the antioxidants in cocoa can increase blood flow throughout your body. Perhaps one of the easiest options for more energy, water. Simply staying hydrated could go a long way and keep your body running at 100%. So try to get plenty of H2O throughout the day. New this morning on KSAT.com, a new attraction for adults opening at SeaWorld San Antonio just in time for the hot summer days ahead. Lone Star Lakeside Bar will open June 11th, a concert from the Josh Abbott Band. The bar will have both indoor and outdoor seating. The patio will overlook the water ski lake, and you'll be able to enjoy handcrafted cocktails and plenty of snacks. Also on KSET.com, a story from the San Antonio Business Journal. A new water park is coming to New Braunfels. Slide the Slope. It's a three-mile inflatable water tubing attraction. It will be located at New Braunfels Texas Ski Resort. The water park will open on June 10th through Labor Day. 644. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. You've had a busy morning. Yeah, you're talking about that uh, afternoon fatigue. I'm already feeling it this morning. All these crashes <laughs> got me pretty tired here, but you know, we want to make sure we keep everybody informed of what's happening. And this crash actually is happening here off Shirts Parkway at I-35 northbound. Now, our friends at Transguide say this is the best shot that they can get us, but you can see right here that traffic is starting to build up there. Uh, now, taking a look here at the maps, we're seeing that crash happening northbound right at Shirts Parkway, but take a look what's happening here in the southbound lanes. We're also seeing a slowdown almost seven miles per hour this morning, so that's going to be impacting your commute, especially if you're heading into downtown San Antonio as well. Now we did have a major crash that we have been talking about throughout the morning here off I-10 eastbound at Ramsgate. That crash has now cleared, but what we want to do now is toss us some video. It sent one man to the hospital and he's now fighting for his life. Now this was a rollover crash, as you can see there on your screen, that happened on the city's northwest side just after two this morning on I-10 near Ramsgate Street. That's I-10 eastbound, that is. Now this is near the medical center. Again, that man was taken to University hospital in critical condition uh, investigators stayed on the scene trying to figure out what caused that crash. But as we saw throughout the morning, things were building up as the day was getting started again, not clear what caused that crash, but that man is in the hospital this morning in critical condition, bringing it back here to trans guys still have this scene happening at 35 at shirts Parkway. We'll be keeping a close eye on things as the morning does pick up. Thank you, Stephen. And we're expecting more rain, Mike. Yeah, uh, we're already starting to see a, kind of another round of some showers popping up around here. Earlier this morning, uh, 410 was kind of on the damp side. It has dried out. Good visibility out there at the airport. And uh, these showers on the northeast side kind of fizzle on out. But notice how things are firing up out to the west, northern Medina, northern Uvalde counties, even a couple of lightning strikes as those cells do uh, start to build. And we've got this one spot right here just crossing 90 on the far west side, even right inside 1604 and just about at 410 as well. So some of these light showers. So it is going to be damp going over there on the, uh, the west side of town. Head over to Little further to the west and again we're seeing some lightning strikes here in around uh, Medina Lake and these uh, these cells the red spots dumping some fairly hefty rain up to the north notice how uh, even on ahead of the main line of storms. Now a lot more is starting to fire up here in and around Kerrville, Fredericksburg. And the other thing that this is not moving real real quickly. Um, it's just been sort of just plotting its way, if you will, through northwestern portions of the hill country. And so the problem with that is these really hefty downpours that move very quickly might see inch, two inches of rain out there to the uh, northwest and with that system as it continues to move on through here. So here's the uh, the broad brush, if you will, as I always like to describe this one computer model uh, throughout the rest of today. More showers, a couple of thunderstorms, same thing around tomorrow. Again, emphasize this doesn't mean everybody sees rain always 24 7 anything like that but we will continue to keep the rain chances around even in through the weekend we'll have breaks obviously here and there and still some hefty downpours even going into the uh, first and middle part of next week and here's some of the estimates from a couple of uh, computer models that going through the next five days you know we could see it again even today one two inches of rain here or there could see three four inches of rain especially in the you know the trend being to the east but that doesn't discount out in portions of the hill country you know a couple of inches of rain and it's that cumulative effect so you get the ground very saturated you get more rain on top of that and that's going to cause the the runoff and Flooding will be an issue if we get some of these heftier thunderstorms around here. That low, which is right around the Baja of California, 
right now is going to sort of park on top of us and just sort of stick around here. And this is going to be what's helping with these these showers around here. And then by the middle of the week, that's going to be replaced by another low, which keeps rain chances around. So today we will have showers and a few thunderstorms. Uh, they're starting to pop up already this morning and then more later on throughout the rest of today. 82 degrees high temperature, about 10 below normal. On the plus side, I mean, we're getting a lot of nice rain and keeping temperatures down. These numbers are all well below the respect to normal, which is low 90s right now and more rain in through the middle of next week. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we're in June because of the rain, you know, bringing and, us. And that's OK. Yeah, we're, we're good with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, Mark. Humidity high and mosquitoes as well, but uh, well, no hot temperatures. Well, let's try to milk this into July and then August. See if we could stretch it into September. Sure. Work your magic, Mike. Repeat of 2007. Magic no Mike. No triple digits. 649, <laughs> about 69 degrees. And summer is almost here. Is your backyard ready for gatherings? Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you how to prepare for the best backyard bash. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go and another check with Stephen Cavazos, our traffic expert still to come on GMSA. Good morning. Yes, I am standing in front of dinosaurs. It's called Big Time. It is a brand new exhibit here at the Philadelphia Zoo. You're going to hear much more about it. 24 animated animatronic dinosaurs. You got to stick around for that. But also coming up here on GMA, we are talking about the latest on the cyber attacks that are targeting our daily life and critical infrastructure from food to transportation and of course fuel. We've seen it all in the last couple of weeks. So what could get hit next and how the Biden administration is responding this morning. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. San Antonio police say they had no other option. They had to shoot and kill a man who was armed with a knife. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That deadly meetup happened in this parking lot around midnight. This is the 2300 block of Castroville Road. According to Chief William McManus, those officers were answering a call about a disturbance, someone with a gun and knife. He says that they did meet up with the man right outside the family dollar. They found him leaning against the building. He says that the officers tried to talk to the man, but he reached into his backpack and pulled out a knife with about a 10 inch blade. Now, Chief McManus says the officers tried to back away, moving all the way to the edge of the street, but the man kept coming, according to the chief. He still had the knife in his hand. Chief McManus says the officers then pulled out their guns and fired, hitting the man in his upper body. Now, that man was taken to a hospital by ambulance where he died. So far, no names have been released. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, we're learning new details about the arrest of former San Antonio City Councilman Chip Haas. He was arrested yesterday afternoon on a prostitution charge. That's according to booking records. San Antonio police say Haas agreed to pay for sex with an undercover officer. He was arrested on the city's south side. His bond was set at $750, and online records show he has since been released from jail. Haas served as councilman for District 10 from, 10, 10 from June 2003 to May 2017. You can read more about or share this story on KSAT.com. And there are a few traffic delays out there, including one at I-35 at Schertz. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Definitely a very busy morning, Mark and Steph, as we get the morning started here this Thursday. We have this major crash that's happening here off 35 at Schertz Parkway. Now, it's hard to see. Again, this is the best view we can get from TransGuy, but we do have traffic that's building up here. Taking a closer look at our map, we do see that crash happened here off 35 northbound at Schertz Parkway, slowing traffic down to six miles per hour. And check out what's happening here in these southbound lanes. Six miles per hour and if you are coming into downtown San Antonio from New Braunfels 73 minutes right now. So big slowdowns there and 281 27 minutes coming in from Boulevardy to downtown San Antonio. And if you're coming in from 24 that is from Bernie on I 10. We are looking at a 24 minute commute time. Uh, we're going to try to get trans guide up one more time here at 35 at Shirts Parkway where that traffic just continues to build very busy morning, but we'll be here to get you through it. More rain is developing as we speak, and as you can see uh, on the west side of town, a couple of hefty downpours there just crossed a 90, even a few showers on the southeast side. And then over there in Medina and Uvalde counties, a couple of thunderstorms and the uh, big area of rain. And this is going to be producing some hefty downpours as it is right now heading in toward Kerrville. This will continue to work its way down to the southeast today. 69 right now, high temperature today of only 82 degrees, more showers and thunderstorms. And we're going to have to watch out for some hefty downpours 
and rain chances through the weekend. All Thank right. you guys. Yeah, you guys be careful out there. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you back here at nine.